Hey, Paul. Hi, Alan. What is pitching? Well, I'm explaining <laughs> to you, or I can show you this video we made for physics class. Let's go. Hi there, welcome to the physics of basic pitching, our first part of 10 part series about throwing things. And I'm your host, Oscar Chu, and this is Umesh Heron and Paul Nemczynski. The definition of a pitch is the act of throwing a baseball towards home plate to start a play. Yes, pitching it is the aspect of baseball where the pitcher, the person throwing the ball, tries to throw the ball past the batter and into the strike zone. A strike is a pitch that is over the plate and above the knees and right below the chest of the batter. If the pitch is not in this area, it is called a ball. But if they swing at the pitch and miss it, it is still a strike. The pitcher stands on an elevated surface called the mound, which is 60 feet and 6 inches away from the plate. This is a pitch. To do this, I use a routine called the wind-up. The wind-up involves a biomechanical principle called the sequential summation of movement, where the largest body mass uh, moves first, followed by progressively smaller masses. The pitcher starts by shifting his weight through his legs and hips and thrusting his body forward. Over three horsepower is generated as energy is transmitted through to the shoulder, to the arm, to the wrist, and to the fingers. The release itself transfers 1.5 horsepower. However, air friction slows down the ball at a rate of about 1 mile an hour. The force of the pitch is affected by two factors, the power generated in the legs and the arm trajectory. For the next segment, we will refer to our expert on the magnitude effect, Dr. Arjun Arawinda. The Magnus effect is the phenomenon where a spinning object flying through a fluid creates a layer of fluid around itself and experiences a perpendicular force to its line of motion. The Magnus effect is the reason that objects spinning through the air tend to curve. When the object travels through the air, the air spins with the object on one side and against the object on the other side. This creates a lower and higher pressure on opposite sides of the object causing the object to curve. In baseball, the Magnus effect can be observed best when looking at different types of pitches. By changing the grip on the ball, the pitcher can alter the spin of the ball, thereby giving it a different path through the air. For example, a fastball, thrown with a backspin, has opposing airflow under the ball, which results in slower air movement and higher air pressure. On top of the ball, however, the boundary layer and the air flowing past are in the same direction. This creates faster airflow and a low pressure region. The higher pressure under the ball and the lower pressure on top of the ball combine to give the ball lift and it curves upwards. So th therefore, the ball experiences a uh, motion, uh, motion perpendicular to its line of motion. A curve ball, however, has top spin, meaning this ball spins the other way. As a result, it's like the opposite of a fastball. The opposing airflow is on top of the ball, which results in a high pressure area, and, the, and there is lower pressure on, under the ball. This causes the ball to curve downwards, which compared to a fastball is opposite. 
The direction and type of curve the ball experiences depends on the grip the pitcher uses, and he can alter the ball's direction by changing his grip. We're done. And now back to you guys in the studio. Now we will be talking about a few of the different pitches that can be thrown in baseball. The first pitch we'll talk about is the fastball. It is the most basic, most used, and most important pitch in baseball. There are many variations, including the two-seam, the four-seam, cutter, and splitter. A good major league fastball is about 90 miles an hour, and the best top out at about uh, 100 miles an hour. The four-seam fastball is designed to beat the batter purely by speed. The ball travels as fast and as straight as possible. Upon release, the ball will first leave the thumb, which puts backspin on the ball. This stabilizes the, ball, uh, the flight of the ball through the air. Gravity is pushing the ball down, while spin is pushing it up. The better the forces are balanced, the better the pitch. The seams create a pocket of calm air around the ball, protecting it from wind and preserving from air resistance and drag. The two-seam fastball is similar to the four-seam, but is slightly slower and offers a bit of movement. The off-center spin on the ball carries it down. The pitcher puts pressure on the top fingers to push the ball out of center and in the direction away from the pitcher. The next type of pitch we'll talk about is called the changeup. The changeup is a slower off-speed pitch that is designed to fool the batter into thinking the ball is coming faster than it really is. It usually is um, 10 to 15 miles per hour slower than the fastball. The purpose is deception. It is often thought to be the best pitch in baseball when thrown well. It is thrown just like a fastball with the same arm action, but it has a different grip. The changeup involves similar physics to the fastball in relation to the backspin created by the thumb and the importance of gravity being in the balance. The extra friction created by the added finger and palm causes a decrease in velocity and a slight downwards movement. The final pitch we will be talking about is the curveball. The curveball is released with top spin. The top of the ball spins into the wind, while the bottom spins with the air. Because of this, the air resistance is less on the bottom of the ball, causing the air to flow under the ball. Since the top of the ball has more air resistance, it is pushed lower and lower as it moves. This creates high pressures above the ball and low pressure below the ball, which causes the ball to, to curve downwards. The stitching on the ball creates added air resistance, creating a greater curve. The pitcher can vary how the ball curves based on the grip he uses. Well, that's all the time we have here, folks. There you have it, the physics of the basics of pitching. Once again, I'm Oscar Chu, this is Umesh Heron, and next to him is Paul Nemchinsky. And next week, we will be talking about the physics of throwing knives. That was amazing! <laughs> I'm gonna go play now! <laughs> <laughs>